Moving on, we are on to Chapter 3 of the Garfield Effect, Galaxy Adventure. Garfield was meditating on top of the roof in Normandy when Edie interrupted him with news. Garfield, the grunt, the team Krogan wants to see you, said Edie with voice. Very well, I will see him in the exercise room, said Garfield. Garfield entered the exercise room and began running to rock and work out music that reminded him of the high school years. Now this is taking me back, said Garfield with nostalgia. While Garfield was reminiscing of glory days of football and girls, Grunt walked in and approached Garfield with earnest. Garfield, I am having trouble and feeling anger with an angst, said Grunt with angsty face. It is okay, friend. You're going through the puberty, said Garfield with biology. I feel all new things that are new, said Grunt the Krogan. It is okay. Let us have friendly bicycle race that will help you work out your hormones. Said Garfield with physicality. I, I'm forcing myself to try and read it in the style he wrote it. But there's so many errors. And I know it's kind of pur purposely done, but still, good God. Garfield and Grunt then had a friendly bicycle race around the Normandy to work out stress in the hormones. Garfield came in first by a large lead, but Grunt did not mind to lose to such manpower. You are too much You are too much man for me, Garfield, said Grunt with perspiration. It is okay, but do you feel better? said Garfield with concern. No, I'm afraid I think we will need to be going to the Krogan homeworld as Krogan elders, said Grunt with Cro the Krogan with tantrum. Very well, we should go and see elders and have you cured. Put the pedal to the metal and blaze us to Krogan homeworld, roared Garfield with orders. The Normandy sped to Duchunka, the home of the Krogan galaxy, over to find a solution to Grunt's riddle of adolescence. When they arrived on Duchunka, Garfield and crew waltzed out to surroundings. Where is Krogan leader? cried out Garfield to the heavens. On hearing Garfield's call, a Krogan approached Garfield. The Krogan leader's over there, pointed the Krogan. Thank you, Krogan, said Garfield with gratitude as he walked on. As Garfield walked, he saw a Krogan guarding a door and approached him. Where is the lead? Where is, where is this lead? Asked Garfield with curiousness. This is where Krogan females are. No aliens are allowed to see females. Not even Garfield, said Krogan with warning air. I see all females, declared Garfield with righteous roaring as he headbutted the Krogan into the ground. After the stupid Krogan was headbutted, Garfield lunged into female camp where he made sweet lovings to all Krogan females for many hours. After his love fest, Garfield went back to the mail camp to get back to business. There is Krogan leader, said Grunt, pointing to the Krogan leader. Garfield strutted up to the Krogan leader like a hotshot cowboy and stared into his eyes with a resolute. What is wrong with my Krogan? demanded Garfield, pointing towards Grunt. Your Krogan is in puberty. He needs to go through the right. You must go see the shaman, said the Krogan leader. I respect culture. I will do the rights, said Garfield with civil rights. With this said, Garfield and Grunt went to the shaman who was doing a shaman dance. Halt, shaman. I want none of your foolery, said Garfield with staring eyes. I am doing cultural ritual. Respect our heritage, said the shaman. I respect three things. Strength, justice, America, and lasagna. Okay, said Garfield with heart. Very good, Garfield. You are manly enough for the right. You must go ahead into the arena and survive all challenges. Garfield and Grunt went to an area ready for heated challenges and challenging battles. Look, Garfield, there are wolves, said Grunt with concern. I have never met a wolf I did not like to slam, said Garfield wittily. Wittily? No, that's not wit. As he took the wolves and slammed them in one on one like lightweight footballs. After shattering the wolves like glass, Garfield and Grunt heard loud earthquake sound. It was Thrasher Mog. Thrasher Mog? 
I thought it was Thresher Ma, but okay. Ha ha, Garfield, I see you've beaten my woes, but can you best me with mighty muscle? Challenge the Thrasher Ma with high self-esteem. I take on all, roared Garfield with a belly full of courage. We will see who is true of manliness, said Thrasher Ma as he faced down Garfield in showdown stance. Garfield and Thrasher Ma circled each other with battlefield legs, eyeing each other like doves ready for combats. Suddenly, the Thrasher Ma pulled out his flamethrower and began spraying flames of ambition at Garfield. Flames of ambition, huh? Ha ha, Garfield, the temperature is rising in Celsius or Fahrenheit, depending on which part of the world you're from. I hope you're not getting too hot for your fur, mocked the Thrasher Ma with defiant grin. I got here, cried out Garfield as his fur singed in hotness. Your cat, your cat will be stew. You will be cat stew on my turkey dinner, rolled the Thrasher Ma with evil snickers. Here, have knuckle sandwich instead, but do not be choking on the bone, said Garfield with cool style as he jumped at Thrasher Ma and punched him with a force of runaway speed train. No, why me, cried the Thrasher Ma as he was punched in two with manly force. After beating the evil Thrasher Ma with mind and body, Garfield and Grunt returned to Krogan camp to receive praise. Congratulations, Garfield, you beat the Thrasher Ma. You are now honorary king of the Krogan, said the Krogan leader. Yes, thank you, Garfield. I am no longer in puberty and can control my emotions, said Grunt as he... Uh, said Grunt, the team Krogan. It is no problem. I needed good workout, said Garfield with thumbs up. With these wise words, Garfield and crew returned to Normandy. Garfield, however, had to head to Metal Lab for checkup since he was burned. Your fur is burned, but you should be okay, said Dr. Chuckwas with relief. Are you sure you would like a closer examination, said Garfield with sass. Yes, maybe a more in-depth checkup is needed, said Dr. Chagwas with a flirty smile. Perhaps you need a checkup, Doctor. Maybe you need to take off your clothes just in case there are lice in your pants, said Garfield with romance. That's not very romantic. Oh, Garfield, you make me feel like a schoolgirl in love, said Dr. Chagwas with lovesick eyes. Hey, I like professionals, and you are one professional babe, said Garfield, who glimmer in, his, uh, in the eyes. Okay. Garfield, I've been seeing you from the distance, but too afraid to speak. But I need you now, in the moment of danger. Will you have me, said Dr. Chocolos with heartfelt love. Yes, my medical equipment is ready right now said Garfield slightly as I embraced and made lovings on the lap tables all night long with medical precision. To be continued.